You all remember Metro Goldwyn Mayer's famous Maisie Pickle. In just a moment, you'll hear Maisie in radio, starring the same glamorous star you all went to see and loved on the screen and Southern. But first, your announcer. Southern as Maisie. Yep, I'm Maisie, like the man said. Maisie Revere from Brooklyn, USA. I remember I used to live near the river, and there was a view from our window. On a clear day, you could look out and see the laundry hanging out in the line. The boarding house I'm living in now ain't no Shangri-La either, and it's pretty far from Brooklyn, too. But my room is clean, and the other boarders are nice, especially Eddie Jordan. Eddie's got educated brains, too. He knows everything. History, geometry, mathematics, and you'll pardon the expression, physics. Everything that guy knows, except how to make a living and how to keep a date. I haven't seen Eddie in a couple of weeks now. We had a fight, you see, and it was all my fault. But he apologized, so I forgave him. Now I'm sorry at Eddie again. He's made dates with me night after night, and he's always standing me up. And after last night, I'm really burning up at him. Oh, pardon me. There's somebody pummeling on my door. Pummeling. That's the word Eddie taught me. Gosh, the things that man knows. Come in. Hello, Maisie, honey. Oh. Hello, Edward. What's the matter, sugar? You're looking at me as if you never saw me before. Oh, I've seen you before, but not lately. Where were you last night? I thought we had a date to watch television. Oh, I'm sorry, Maisie. Well, that's all right, Eddie. I watch the shows by myself. But believe me, it wasn't very romantic standing in front of the window of that radio store with utter strangers. Uh, look, honey... And in the rain, too. It was terrible. Well, I can explain why I didn't meet you, baby. I was in the library, wrapped up in Brown's hydrodynamics. Well, you're lucky. I didn't even have a slicker. That's a book on engineering, Maisie. I've been studying it for three weeks now. You see, Professor Brown has a new theory on making suspension oh, structures. Oh, why don't you forget that engineering stuff, Eddie? You ain't made a dime at it. And all you got for four years of college is a hunk of paper that says, to whom it may concern. But, Maisie... And if you ask me, to whom it may concern, don't seem to be very concerned. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Well, gee, I, I ain't saying that being an engineer ain't nice, but... Eddie, you got a job? Could be. Oh, that's wonderful... How much? Well, the salary, I'd say about seventy-five. Seventy-five dollars a week. Hmm? Eddie, we're millionaires. Oh, kiss me, John D. Hmm. Come in. Hey, matey, do you you? Ooh, oh, 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 pardon me. Sit down, mate, and we'll be through soon. Oh, yeah, Maisie, Eddie. Mm-hmm. I can come back later, Maisie. I sort of feel a little bit in the way. Oh, no, Merton. And I want you to be the first to hear the good news. Eddie's got a job. No. Well, congratulations, yeah. Ed. Uh, well, I'm afraid congratulations are a little premature. Premature? Yeah. Premature. Wait a minute. I have to... Oh, you don't have to look it up in the dictionary, Maisie. Uh, that means uh, I-, I don't have the job uh, yet. You don't? But I thought you'd... No, it's this way, honey. There is a draftsman's job open with the Bradley Engineering Company. The Bradley Company? Uh, Say, that's a real big outfit. They employ about a hundred people. With me, it'll be a hundred and one. That is, if old man Bradley likes my bridge. Eddie Jordan, what has your teeth got to do with getting a job? Uh, Honey, that's why I was tied up to the library last night. Oh. Bradley advertised in the Engineer's Journal that he would award a job to the engineer who came up with the best sketch of a new suspension bridge that his company's contracted to erect over the river. And you won it? That's a stupid question, isn't it, Maisie? Yeah, stupid question. Did you win it, Eddie? No, but I'm going to. I got a swell idea from reading Professor Brown's new book last night. 
And, honey, I've got a sneaking suspicion that it's just what the doctor ordered. Oh, you, you mean when Bradley gets a load of your sketch, he's bound to give you the job? That's right, Merton. Gosh, I'm so happy I could kiss you. Yeah, oh, please, Eddie, you're an engaged man, practically. He means me. Oh, well, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, but I've still got some work to do on that sketch. I'm going to need the professor's book for reference. I'll see you when I get back from the library. Oh, but, honey, couldn't I go with you? I get so lonesome being here by myself. Oh, I'll stay with you, Maisie. I don't get that kind of lonesome. Oh. Uh, look, honey, I've got to get that sketch into Mr. Bradley by tomorrow morning. The competition closes then. See you later, babe. Mm -hmm. I've got to pick up my notes in my room and get to that library. Mm -hmm. And I hope Gladys hasn't loaned out that book. Yeah, I hope Gladys hasn't loaned out that... Gladys? Yeah, Maisie, that's the librarian's name. Gladys Horns Wagledorf. Oh, well, I guess I don't have to worry about leaving Eddie alone with anybody with a name like that. She's probably one of those dried-out old maids with a face like a prune, huh? Uh-uh. No prune? No prune. Oh. What's she like, Mert? Well, she's, um, quote, <whistles> unquote. Oh. And Eddie calls her by her first name, too. Yeah, well... But that don't mean anything, Maisie. No, I guess that don't mean anything. Well, I've got my notes. I'm off to the library. Uh, just a minute, Eddie. I'll get my hat. Get your hat? What for? I just remembered. I haven't read a book in years. Maisie, not so loud. We're in a library. But I didn't say anything, Eddie. People are trying to read, and your shoes bother them. Well, they bother me, too. I'll never buy shoes on sale again. Shh! Eddie, there's a strange man trying to talk to me. Oh, he just said, shh. What? Shh! Please, this is a library. I know. I can tell by all the books. Maisie, shh. That's much better. Over here, Maisie. Hmm. She's pretty, isn't she, Eddie? Who is? Gladys. Look, Maisie, I don't know what's cooking in that beautiful head of yours, but this is a library. I only come here to get books. Technical books. I'm working on a bridge. I've got plans. That's why I came along. I want to find out what those plans are. Please. If you folks want to stay here, you'll have to be more quiet. Oh, sure, Gladys. Oh. So this is Gladys, huh? Shh. Please, Miss. Some people come in here to read, and other people come in here for other reasons. Maisie, are you out of your mind? What? Answer the man, lady, so we can all go back to our silly reading. Oh, shut up. Miss, this is a library. You'll have to whisper. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, mister. Yeah? Shut up. Please. Now, if you can't be quiet, I'll have to ask you both to leave. Uh, sure, sure. Don't mind Maisie Gladys. So you're the girl Eddie told me so much about. Yes. And you're the girl he told me so little about. Uh, Gladys, I'd like to take out oh, something. Oh, sure, Eddie. Oh, don't get so excited, Gladys. You're not the something he'd like to take out, I hope. Uh, I'm talking about a book. I was using it yesterday. Professor Brown's Theory of Hydrodynamics. Oh, it hasn't been loaned out yet, Eddie. You'll find it back in the technological section, as usual. Uh, thanks. I'll be right back, Maisie. Uh, I'd like to take out a book, too. Oh. Anything particular in mind, honey? No. Just something to walk around with on my head. I want to improve my posture. Oh. Oh, yes. Eddie. Yes? A new book on suspension bridges just came in. Yes. It's way back in the last aisle. In case you're interested, I'd be glad to go with you. Uh, never mind, dearie. I think we can get along without you. But it's pretty dark back there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's why we can get along without you, if you know what I mean. Come on, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. Oh, please, Maisie, don't bother me. Can't you see I'm working? Well, the library's no place to work, Eddie. 
You got your Professor Brown's book, so how's about coming back to the boarding house if you have to scribble things on paper? These aren't scribblings, Maisie. They're rough plans for that bridge sketch. I have to have it tomorrow for Mr. Bradley, remember? Well, why can't you take the book home and work on the plans there? Well, well, you won't be disturbed by looking up. Looking up? Yeah, at that Gladys. Maisie, when I look up, I'm just thinking. Yeah, but I ain't so sure I like what you're thinking. Oh, for heaven's sake, Maisie, please let me study... You be quiet. Shut up. Don't you talk to my... Don't you dare talk to my girl like that. Gee, he really loves me. This has gone far enough. What's the matter, Jealous? You're creating a disturbance. I'll have to ask you two to leave. Uh, but the book I haven't finished. Oh, I'm I... sorry, Eddie. But you know the rules. Yeah. Come on, Maisie. Oh, I'm sorry, Eddie. I didn't think. That's your trouble. You never think. Now I may never get to finish that bridge sketch. Maisie, I could shoot you. Well, I deserve it, honey. But I'm afraid shooting is out. Too bad. Yeah, you'll have to use a bow and arrow. A gun is too noisy for a library. The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern, will continue in just a moment. I'm sorry about giving you that bum steer about Eddie and that librarian. This whole mess is my fault. No, it's mine, Merton. I guess I'm just a drip. Huh? And like all drips, I'm just something you can keep hearing and can't turn off. If I'd have just kept my mouth shut, Eddie could have had that book he needs so much to finish the plans of that bridge. Oh, don't feel that way, Maisie. Well, Eddie will get over it. He'll take you back. After what I did to him, he'd have to be out of his mind to take me back. Well? I don't aim to go through life with a crazy man. Uh, Come in. Oh, Eddie, it's you. Yeah. I wish it weren't. Eddie, where are you? I'm not talking to you. Oh. Merton. Hmm? Ask him where has he been. Okay. Eddie, where have you been? Hmm. Maisie, he says, hmm. Hmm? Eddie, she says, hmm. Tell her I used a little political pull and I got myself a library card to take out technical books. Oh, you did? Maisie, he said he thought... I heard him. Gosh, Eddie, now you can take out that book. Yeah, tell him. She says, yeah. But I just came from the library and somebody else took out the book. Tell her. And maybe he oh, just Oh, but this back. is an emergency. Can't you go to that somebody and borrow the book till tomorrow, tell him? Uh, yeah, Eddie, uh, what she said, can't you? Bill Maddox is the one that borrowed it. He went to engineering school with me. Well, that makes it easier, don't it? Hmm. Nice. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. That makes it easier, don't it, Eddie? Yeah, for Bill to get that job with old man Bradley. That book had all my notes on the bridge sketch in it. You mean he's going to submit your sketch tomorrow to Bradley as his own? Probably. Tell her. Oh, let's stop this tell him game. This is serious. She says, let's stop this oh, tell him game. Shut, this up, is... shut up. Oh. Eddie, he can't do that. But he is, darling. Little Billy Boy has taken a room at the Brighton Hotel, a nice quiet room, where he can work without anybody bothering him. But he shouldn't get that job. He's not as smart as you. He's smarter. He has no girlfriend. Oh, mm-hmm. gosh. Well, ain't there nothing we can do? Ain't there nothing to keep him from turning in that sketch to Bradley in the morning? Oh, sure. Bill could suddenly get a nervous breakdown. And I know just the little woman who could bring it on, but fast. <gasps> Say, that's a wonderful idea, Eddie. I said something? Merton. Huh? Yeah. I- I'm going to need your help. What? Can you get hold of a bellhop's uniform? A bell? Oh, yeah, sure. I know one of the fellas at the Brighton Hotel. We once double-dated with a couple of chambermaids and bellhop's uniform? Yeah, for you. Maisie. Oh. 
What's cooking in that head of yours? Don't ask questions, Eddie. Just get to work. C- can you remember enough of that bridge sketch to get it down on paper by tomorrow? Yes, but Bill Maddox has a head start. He's bound to get his finished and submitted before mine if given half a chance to concentrate. Yeah, but he ain't going to get a chance, honey. Here's one little chambermaid who's going to drive him so crazy he won't be able to finish. Come on, Mert. Oh, good evening, sir. And what can I do for you? Don't shout. I'm a sick man. Terrible headache. I, I'd like a room, a quiet one. Do you have a reservation? I'm Philip J. Bradley. He, not the Mr. Bradley of the Bradley Engineering Company. Yes. I want a room just for the night. I can't sleep in my home. There's a cricket out in the garden someplace, and the noise is driving me crazy. Oh, well, there's always room for you at the Brighton Hotel, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> uh, you sign here. Okay. Oh, my head. I can't stand the roar of that pen scratching. I'm a sick man. I can't stand any noise. Headache, terrible headache. Uh, Mr. Bradley, I can let you have room number 701. Now, I'm sure you'll find it very quiet because the gentleman who has the room above you, Mr. Bill Maddox, also insisted on quiet. So I know you won't be disturbed. Are you sure? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mr. Maddox is going to be very busy working tonight. He's doing some drawing. Well, I hope he uses a soft pencil. In my condition, the slightest sound makes my temples throb. I'll take that room. Good. No, stop that awful clanging. I can't stand it. Sorry, oh, I'm sorry. Boy, boy, take Mr. Bradley up to room 701. Oh, oh, come in. Mr. Hey. Maddox, Mr. Bill Maddox. Eh? Uh, I'm the chambermaid here. I just wanted to find out whether you're comfortable. Oh, yeah, well, oh, very, miss. Oh, that's fine. We always like to have people who stay at the hotel yes, very comfortable. Well, if you'll excuse me, I, I'll get back to work. You see, I've got a very important bridge sketch I've got to finish. Oh, I used to play bridge one. Miss, now, if we only had a please, third or a fourth, why would we Please. Huh? Now, this cable goes here. Oh. And this one goes... Uh, you know something, Mr. Maddox? Uh, what? You shouldn't sit in that straight-back chair. That rocking chair is much more comfortable. Miss Cable... Uh, miss, I can't work in a rocking chair. Rocking makes me sleepy. Well, it won't rock if it was nailed to the floor. You... Look, Miss, I'm busy. Oh, that's really. all right. I... I'm not. Hey, Martin! What do you want, miss? Say, what is this? Look, Bellhop, will you in this chamber, may... Nail the rocker to the floor? You... Certainly. Let's do it, Matt. Yeah, I just happen to have a hammer and nails with me. Good. Uh-huh. Mm. Ah, yeah, hand me another nail, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Now, that's good. Ah, that ought to do it. Yeah, won't budge. Please. Will you please go away now? I'm working. I thought I told you to stop. Well, that ain't us hammering. It must be an echo. A mic. It's coming from room downstairs. Now, look. Look, please. I've got work to do. Now, you two get out of here. Well, okay. Come on, Mike. Oh. At last. Now, now, where was I? Oh, oh, yeah. This cable. This cable goes. Yeah, it goes here. And the angle of information is. Hello. You again. I'm sorry, but we chambermaids got to spend at least a half an hour in each room. Rules, you know. Okay. Okay. Just. Sit down. Any place. But be quiet. Sure. Sure. Now, good. The angle... The angle of inclination is... is the angle. Must you hum, miss? Well, I gotta do something to keep me occupied. Uh, the angle... Come in. I didn't hear any knock. Oh, well, no. You was waiting until the last minute. See, there it is now. Come in. Oh, fine. Good evening, sir. Would you care for a picture of ice water? No, get out. Okay. Well, now, where have you... Now, where was I? Uh, the, the angle... Uh, the You'll be is... sure to ring me if you change your mind. Get out! I'll never get this sketch finished. The uh, angle... Mr. Maddox, does it annoy you that bad? What? The water dripping from that leaky faucet in the bathroom. I can't even hear it. Oh, of course you can. 
Listen real close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, I can hear it. Now, it doesn't bother me, no. Oh, but it might. But he ain't... A thing like that can get to be very annoying. I'd better go in and fix it. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Anything to get you out of the way. Now, the ang- Now, let's see. Uh, plumbers always start by banging on the pipe. Stop that! Stop that! I did. The dripping is gone. Thank goodness. Now I can get back to work. Oh, now it's running. I'd better hit these pipes some more. that echo again. Miss. Huh? Miss. Huh? They want you to stop banging down there. Well, that's silly. I'm not banging down there. I'm banging up here. Young man. What the places do you want, you old goat? Who, oh, goat? I have the room just below you. Who's been pounding on those pipes? what I'd like to know. I've been banging away to get you to stop. And I've been banging away to get you to stop. Copycat. Now, look. I'm trying to get to work on some... Pie and pie I'm pie. trying to get some sleep, and the slightest noise drives me crazy. Well, then why were you hammering downstairs? Why was I hammering? Yes, and stop raising your voice to me. You stop raising your voice to me. I have to. You're taller. Just now, look. Both of you. i got to sketch the finish. So now, out. Out. Fire, out. Fire. 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 I'm getting out yeah, of here. Yeah, me too. Oh, my gosh. Where are you going, Maisie? Where am I going? Well, didn't you just show fire? Yeah. Well, where is it? Down the street. I thought them fellas in here might like to go see it. Oh, you're wonderful, Mercy. You too. <laughs> now, where's that book with Eddie Stetson? Oh, it's got... Oh. Here it is, Maisie. Good. I'm going to rush him back to Eddie. Uh-huh. Gee, I bet he'll love me even more when he sees how much I helped him in getting that job with Mr. Bradley. <laughs> Gosh, you really mean it, Mr. Bradley? That draftsman job is honest to goodness, mind. Yeah, that's right, Jordan. Your sketch of the suspension bridge was head and shoulders above all the others. You start working this Monday. Gee, gosh. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Bradley. Oh, what I need now isn't thanks, Jordan. It's a new head. The one I have now feels like a B-29 using it for target practice. Uh, uh, Mr. Bradley, sir, do you think you can pull yourself together long enough to meet Maisie? Uh... Maisie? My fiance. Oh, that. Uh, she's waiting outside to hear whether or not I... Well, you know. And now with my new job, we can finally get married. Everything that's happened, I owe to Maisie. Oh, sure, sure. Bring her in, Jordan. I always like to meet the little woman who stands behind the successful man. Thanks. Where do you meet Maisie, boss? You'll just love her. Come in, Maisie. Sure, Ed. Is it, um... Did he... I mean, uh, you know... Uh Uh-huh. Oh, gee, that's wonderful. I'm so glad. Uh, Maisie, honey, I want my boss to meet you. Mr. Bradley, (laughs) this is Maisie Revere. Here, I'm very glad to meet you, Miss Revere. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. And I, 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 I. Just a moment, Maisie. That voice, it sounds familiar. Uh, Wait till I find my glasses. Oh, 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 um, Mr. Bradley, you don't want to cover up those great, big, beautiful eyes with glasses? Oh, they're really not very big. Uh, Maisie, honey, Mr. Bradley was kind enough to want to meet you. And he has a splitting headache, too. He ain't the only one. Let's go, Eddie. But what's the hurry? Now, wait a minute. There's something familiar about you. Me? You remind me of a chambermaid last night. She had a peculiar accent, sort of like she came from Brooklyn. Oh, Riley. Oh, utterly, utterly, Riley. Yes. Hmm. Well, by uh, Joe, that is rather a carry. Maisie, honey, Mr. Bradley's going to pay me $85 a week. $85? Uh-huh. I mean, uh, why, that's almost 40 pounds, Bob. Well, uh, do you think you and Eddie here can afford to get married on that, Mrs. Vere? Oh, can we? It's a pipe. Well, I'm glad. Pipe. Pipe. Why, you're the one who was banging away at those pipes. Maisie. Uh, out, Jordan. And take this walking Chinese torture cell with you. But, but the job... Yeah, what about the job? Yeah! That's what I was afraid of. Out! Out! And if I never see either of you again, I thank you! Uh. Well, Maisie? Eddie, honey, I didn't suspect... I, well, I didn't know that... Maisie Revere, answer me this. 
How can you get everybody so mad at you? How can you get into so much trouble? How can you pull so many boners in one day? It's easy, Eddie. I get up early. In just a moment, we shall return to the adventures of Maisie. Here's Maisie. Well, that job was pretty close for Eddie. But as the janitor said to the man who just missed the cuspidor, close isn't good enough. I tried, though. But as the saying goes, there's a certain place that's paved with good intentions. And the way Eddie feels now, I bet he wishes I was down there paving. But am I worried that Eddie won't forgive and forget? Am I afraid that he's mad enough to call off our engagement? <laughs> you darn tootin' I am. You've just heard The Adventures of Maisie, starring Anne Southern. <laughs> Maisie was written by Arthur Phillips. Original music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. Supporting cast included Sidney Miller, Frank Nelson, Lorene Tuttle, Pat McGeehan, Gerald Moore, and Jack Edwards. Jack McCoy speaking.